Skyrim Anniversary Edition has been out for almost a year now. On November 11th, 2021, we got a number of Creation Club DLCs that revamped the world of Skyrim in a big way. For those who don't know what the Creation Club is, essentially, there are a variety of paid mods that span from quests, weapons, and of course, houses. The house creations are very different from one another with dwarven homes to vampire manors and quaint farming cottages. All of them have their own distinct theme to them and that is what brings us here today. And what is up guys, Ange from the Den Men here and today we will be ranking every single home from the Creation Club. They vary greatly from architecture, setup, and location. So if you are excited, make sure you hit that like button and comment which Creation Club house is your favorite. But with that being said, we have a lot to go over. So get comfy, grab that bottle of Hunting Brew Mead, and let's get right into the video. Starting off our list, we have the quaint little house of Tundra Homestead. Found in the northern plains of Whiterun, the area surrounding this player home is mostly farmland and ranches, which really leans into the whole design of the house. You are able to acquire Tundra Homestead pretty easily by purchasing the deed from the steward of Whiterun for 7,500 gold, and depending on who you ask, this could be a good or bad thing. Me personally, I love how they have incorporated quests to make the home seem more lively to the world. Once you purchase it, it will already be fully furnished with almost everything you need throughout your many adventures. Before you even enter the home, the property of Tundra Homestead consists of a lot of different amenities outside, including a grindstone, workbench, smelter, tanning rack, anvil, beehives, and a farm. The exterior is quite extensive and one of the better parts to the home. Now heading inside, it gets a lot more cramped with the children's bedroom and bedroom sharing the same room. Same goes for the kitchen and dining room as well. This is a big takeaway for the home, but the overall design of it does make up for it a little. If you head into the room on your right, we have the Enchanters and Alchemy Room, which is well lit, but is a little small and lacking in design for it to share the same room. Downstairs though is the real selling point, with the Armory being a great place to store a lot of different items in the game. There are plenty of weapon and armor racks, but there are unique ones for certain things in the game, like the Bugs in the Jar or Dragon Priest Mask. Overall, if you were going for a nice small starter home, this is not a bad option, with it having a lot of the basic needs right there and White Run right next door. For me though, there are better options out there with more spacious designs, and that is why it lands at our number 9 spot. Coming in at our number 8 spot, we have the Nordic Longhouse of Hendraheim. Found in the Rocky Mountains of the Reach, the view from atop is quite enjoyable with a lot of the region to look across. The quest to acquire Hendraheim, although quite simple, requires the player to face off against the challenger in a fight to the death for the key to the house. This should not be that difficult for the Dragonborn to accomplish, but it is certainly a slight step up from Tundra Homestead. You also need to spend no gold for the house itself, and this goes for any upgrades as well with the home being fully furnished by the time you acquire it. I enjoy the fact that some player homes require you to meet a certain gold amount because it feels like you are working towards something, but at the same time, it is good to have some that you don't need to buy as well. The exterior of Hendraheim is quite compact, but there are still all the basics with all the crafting stations and a stable to make it seem more filled in. Even though the outside of the home is not as good as some others, it makes up for it with the interior. I love the theme of the Nordic Longhouse, and the amount of space makes it seem a lot larger than it actually is. The whole top floor is all one room, excluding the bedroom, which honestly makes Hendraheim look even better. If everything had its own room, it would look a lot smaller and overall ruin the aesthetic of the home. When you first walk in, you have the entryway, 
which is quite a step up from Tundra Homestead. Heading down the stairs though is where it really gets good with your enchanting and alchemy table on each side and going even further are the kitchen and a small display area. I love the addition of the kitchen and display area on each side because it gives the home a somewhat symmetrical feel while also making it seem different. Where Hendraheim loses points for me is in its bedroom area with again the children and master sharing the same room. The room itself is quite small and really brings down the whole house. Moving past that though, there is a downstairs near the main entrance which has even more display cases and weapon racks. I'd say that this room could have looked a little better with their own design, but the purpose of them is to make the home your own, so it could have been worse. Hendraheim is a pretty basic house when it comes to those that came in Creation Club. It only is slightly better than Tundra Homestead because of the size and the theme in my opinion. Either way, it still is not better than a lot of the other ones out there and lands at our number 8 spot. This is where the list gets a little more difficult with the rest of them having a very distinct theme to them and a lot to love as well. Next one up is one that could be considered to be quite controversial because it has some of the best and worst features to any player home. Just southwest of Windhelm we have the necromancer home of Gallows Hall. There isn't really anything to the exterior besides a small pond to the front. This would usually be considered a downgrade from the others, but in Gallows Hall's case it fits the theme of the home pretty well. Since it is a necromancer sanctuary you wouldn't expect to see anything on the exterior because they are trying to keep their dark practices away from the outside world. Moving into the interior you are met with a large circular room with an altar in the center of it. The centerpiece of this room is actually a unique soul gem converter that lets you create better soul gems through the means of other gems. This is something that is a great addition to a home set for necromancy so I'm glad we got to see it here. The room itself really fits the vibe of a rundown hall that necromancers practice their magic with alchemy and enchanting tables lining near the edges. There are also a number of display stands to make the home your own, which is a major plus in my opinion. Heading down the stairs we are greeted with the master bedroom which is definitely better than the others we had on our list so far. I really enjoy the circular design of it with everything centered around a display stand with a number of cabinets and chests around the area. Even though I still enjoy this room I think that it is still a little too bland and could be made better with a couple of necromantic decorations scattered about. On the bottom level you will find a very unique room with a stack of bones in the center of it. The bone forge is capable of creating your own undead. This is a great addition and really fits the theme of the home well. Gallows Hall is a good size but in my opinion doesn't utilize the space as well as it could. There are three floors to the house and yet it all feels like it was one little room or design feature away from making it a top tier home. I definitely like the overall theme to Gallows Hall but I can't find myself picking it over others out there and that is why it sits at our number 7 spot. Now moving on to our number 6 spot we have one of the most unique homes in the game with Dead Man's Dread. For those who don't know what this is yet, it's a pirate ship, which is cool and all, but then why is it at our number 6 spot? Well not only is it a pirate ship, it is the home of one of the many protagonists of the Elder Scrolls series with Cyrus who is the hero of the game Redguard. This is really cool to see but even though there is a lot to love about this, there is also a lot to dislike about it as well. Starting off, I love the fact that it is situated on its very own island. This really fits the theme of a pirate ship quite well but now for the downside of it. It does take a lot to actually get into the home with there being two loading screens to get to the exterior of the ship 
but also an additional one for getting to the interior. They should have definitely cut down on the load screens by at least one and is a big downside in my opinion. Before you can actually use the ship as a home, you will need to complete the quest called the Restless. It starts in the Winking Skeever in the City of Solitude and takes you from the Solitude Jail all the way to the north of Skyrim with Blackbone Isle. The quest itself is pretty straightforward, so there won't be a lot you won't miss. A little disclaimer though before we talk about the home, for those wondering if we will be able to refurbish it to get rid of the cobwebs and clean it up a bit, there is no option to do so. This is a major downside for the house all on its own. If we were able to clean it up, make it look better, then it would likely be a lot higher on the list. But in the condition it is, I can't put it higher than where it's at now. Moving on from some of the cons, let's talk about what is actually good about Dead Man's Dread. I really like the idea of having it on its own island and leans really well into the theme of a pirate ship. The little cove that the home sits in really looks cool and from the lighting and design makes it look that much better. There is a top deck for the ship but is another missed opportunity here. They definitely could have made it look a little nicer but in the state as in now it just looks like a mess which will be a common theme for the home. If we move on to the interior though, there is actually a lot to like about the home as well. Starting with, there is a lot of space to move around and plenty of rooms that make you feel like this is your own ship. There are a couple of side rooms that just have beds and even though you are able to hire your own crew, it is still a neat touch nonetheless. We also have an enchanting and alchemy lab and it is quite small. For such a large ship, I would have liked to see them either have their own separate areas or have much larger room to fit more displays in it. We do however have a lot of good areas as well and the feature of being able to travel to some of the major cities on the water is also a neat touch. The master bedroom in particular has a good layout and doesn't go overboard with a lot of its design. If you head out the door, you will have the dining slash bar area. This is another room that I really enjoy with how large it is and how spread out the tables and decorations are. A lot of the rooms for Dead Man's Dread are very similar to one another and sometimes it can be hard to find your way around. I do like the design of the home and the theme of it being a ship is really unique to Skyrim. I would however have liked to see a lot more done with it. There were just a lot of missed opportunities here and the potential was there for making it one of the best homes in not just Creation Club, but also the game. A lot of these little things I can't overlook, but it is still a very unique home, so that is why it sits at our number 6 spot. Next up at our number 5 spot we have one for the mages out there with the Tower of Mirwatch. Found in the swamps of Morthal, the home is quite a mysterious one, but definitely one of the better ones. Starting off with the exterior, there isn't much here, but I actually like this a lot. I especially like the location of Mirwatch because the swamps blend really well with the home, and the statue facing outwards is a great addition as well. If we head inside though, we are greeted with a circular room that is actually really well designed. One part I really enjoy is the center of it all, with the chairs facing towards the middle and a fire pit just along the edge. If we take a look past this though, we have both the children's beds and master bed. This brings down Mirwatch a lot for me, because it would have been really nice for them to get their own rooms, with a teleporting door like we will see later on. I really wish they took the way of adding another teleporting door on the other side because it would have given it a nice symmetrical design to the home. All of the different banners and windows to Magnus are a good design for the mage themed home as well, but I would have also liked them to take it a step further by adding a few candlelight spell fountains to not only improve the lighting, but to lean even further into the theme of the house. Looking past the main area and heading into the gallery is where Mirwatch turns into a top tier location. 
For starters, the lighting is amazing. The aesthetic of a mage tower with spells being a big part of it makes it that much better. In the center area is a great design. They were able to add all of the crafting tables while also keeping it as a spacious area. I also really enjoy the little farming area because it is exactly what you would expect for someone looking to farm for alchemy ingredients. They were also able to add a staff enchanter on the right side which fits the home really well. All of the different display cases and weapon racks are separated a good distance so as not to seem excessive. Overall, I really like the aesthetic of Mirwatch, but there just seems like a lot of missed potential here, and that is why we have it at our number 5 spot. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have one for the vampires out there with Bloodchill Cavern. The home itself is built into the side of a mountain, and really fits well with the vampiric theme to it. The way you acquire this home is through a small quest called Guest for Dinner. Even though it is a short one, it is quite an enjoyable experience, so I won't spoil what happens. There is nothing really to look at outside of the cavern, but when you head inside you are greeted with a large cave. This is quite an enjoyable view with it giving you a good idea of what to expect inside the house. The waterfall, dark lighting, and enclosed area is great for those who are vampires, and this is just the beginning. Crossing the patio, we are greeted with a patio area, and even though it could be better, it is still a great addition nonetheless. When we head through the door into the house itself, we have a wood cutting block to our left and an interior farm to our right. This is something that fits really well with the theme of a vampiric home, and it makes a lot of sense why it would be here and not in other places of the home. That being said though, it still feels shoehorned in, and I would have much rather have liked it on the patio or across the bridge. It would have left this area for a grand entryway, instead of a small farm and wood block. When we head down the stairs though is where the home really shines, with a large hall that connects the rest of the house to the entrance. If we look on the first door to our left, we have the forge which could be considered on the smaller side, but also a cell to hold a vampire's victims. Even though I think that having the forge is a great addition, it feels like this room was given less attention compared to the others and could have been a little better than what we got. Heading back towards the grand hall and going into the first door on our right, we have a very spacious children's bedroom. This is definitely one of the better rooms. Not only is it one of the larger children rooms we have gotten, there are also plenty of decorations to make it even better. It is one of the best rooms we have seen on our list so far, and it is only the beginning because when we head through the second door on the left of the hall, we have the kitchen and dining area. This room is amazing. From all the decorations, to the lighting, and the spacious area, it can't really get much better when it comes to a dining area. I especially love the kitchen area because it also doubles as a small bar for those who just want to unwind after a long adventure with a cold mug of black briar mead. In the kitchen itself there is an oven and cooking pot if anyone wanted to cook as well. I really enjoy this room but it still gets better from here with our final room in the grand hall with the master bedroom. If this home couldn't get any better, we have a two-floored master bedroom with plenty of decorations and even a staff enchanter. What really sets this home apart from the others is the fact that it takes the idea of a vampire home and turns it up a notch with being able to sleep in your own coffin, which is definitely a neat touch. On the bottom floor of the room, we also see a small treasury which even though there isn't much to it, doesn't take away from the home at all. On the second floor though, we have a great addition of a fireplace with chairs to sit in front of. We also have plenty of mannequins and display cases to make it just that much better. To finish off, we head back to the grand hall and head up the stairs we have a large armory 
with plenty of places to put unique weapons and armor from your travels. Following the trends of the other Creation Club homes, we have a number of places to put special equipment, like the Dragon Priest mask, and even places for Dawn Guard weapons and items. Overall, I really enjoy this home, but even though there is a lot to like about it, you have to take the good with the bad, and in my opinion, the rooms like the farm area bring it down just enough to have it at our middle spot of number 4. Moving on, we get into the heart of the list, and there are some serious arguments for these at any spot remaining, but for the sake of the video, we will continue on starting with Shadowfoot Sanctum. For our thieves out there, this is designed for you in more ways than one. Not only is it found in the crime-ridden city of Riften, you will find this one in the Ratways near the Thieves Guild themselves. It's pretty simple to acquire Shadowfoot. All you have to do is have 7500 gold and purchase it off Veckel the Man, who is the barkeep for the Ragged Flagon. It does come fully furnished, just like most of the homes on this list, so you know what you will be getting right from the start. What could be a controversial point for the home is the level of difficulty it takes to actually get to Shadowfoot compared to the others. It is housed in the Ratway, which is somewhat of a maze, so for newer players or people who don't know the Ratway yet, it could be a little difficult and time consuming at first. However, it does fit the theme of a hidden thieves den really well, so for those role playing a thief in the night, this is the home for you. There is no true exterior, but when you first enter into Shadowfoot Sanctum, you will be met by a winding tunnel and water pouring into the house. This sets the initial tone for the home because any thief would not want unwanted travelers here, so the creepy vibe will steer them away pretty well. But when you continue on, you are met with some lavish designs like we will see a little later. Moving on though, we have a small crafting area with a little water area to continue the theme of Riften. Again, we are still in the parts of the house that are supposed to be less stylish, but in my opinion, this was a little bit of a wasted opportunity. We definitely could have seen a lot better for a crafting area or even a few decorations that keep up with the thief design. From here on out though, Shadowfoot becomes one of the best homes in the game with some amazing styles. Our first room leads into the rest with the dining room. I really enjoy this area because of how unique it is. It is not a big room, it feels like the perfect size so that it's not too cramped, but also not big enough where it seems like too much. The lighting throughout the home, not just in the dining room, is some of the best on this list. If we take a look at Bloodshell Cavern at times, it can seem too dark, but with Shadowfoot, you don't have this problem. There are also two different sitting areas in the dining room, and each has their own purpose. Finally, the portraits on the wall around the house are a great design, and I would like to see more of them throughout the others. The next area is the children's bedroom, and even though it might be a little small, it fits the overall aesthetic of the home really well. There isn't much here that hasn't been said already, but the little decorations were a neat touch and gives it a step up on others out there. Moving on, we have the master bedroom, which is definitely one of the better ones we have seen. Again, it's just the little things like the carpet design or the plants lining the room or even the uniquely styled chair that makes it just that much better. Our final main room is the bar slash kitchen area which is definitely a great addition. It is on the smaller side but this is exactly what you would expect to have in a thieves home and not to mention it looks quite good. If this is all the home offered then it would be a lot worse, but behind one of the cabinets, we have a trophy room that is one of the better ones out there. Not only does it fit the theme of the home well with a hidden treasure area, but it also has a really good design. It doubles as an alchemy and enchanting room as well, which brings it down a little bit because I would have liked to see separate rooms away from the treasury, but it still works nonetheless. All of the display and weapon racks are situated in good spots and brings up the home a lot in my opinion. 
I really enjoy the overall aesthetic of the home and little things like adding a hidden cabinet or certain decorations make Shadowfoot Sanctum a perfect place to play as a thief. There is no real bad design throughout the home and it has a lot going for it as well, so that is why we have it at our number 3 spot. The list now brings us to our two finalists and these are my top tier creation club homes. I consider these the best of the best, but to all of you, you might have a different list, so make sure to comment down below your top 3 homes in Skyrim. To begin with the silver medal at our number 2 spot, we have the Dwemer home of Nichu Anthems. I've always loved the designs of the Dwemer, and especially in home design like Valindra Hall from Markarth, but Nichu Anthems takes it above and beyond and makes it a really enjoyable one. Not only in the house itself, but the quest to acquire it is also really good as well. It fits the home because you are building it over time through automatons during the quest. You will see Nichu Anthems being built back up over the course of a couple of days and is a good experience and leads to a unique quest. Now let's get into the house itself starting with the exterior. There isn't much here besides a winding tunnel leading into a large area with the door to the home. Step through that door and this is where Nichu Anthems truly begins. There is a lot going on inside the home, starting with the hallway that connects a lot of the areas. The lighting is surprisingly good with it having to be a Dwemer ruin and the architecture is amazing to say the least. There are a lot of spacious areas here as well, starting with our crafting and treasury display room. There isn't really much to say here except for I love how much space is actually given and that we get all of the crafting equipment as well. Heading past into the room on the left, we have a small guest bed leading into the children's bedroom. Don't mistake me saying that it is a small guest room, that I mean that it is a tiny room, because it's not. Instead, there isn't much to it besides a few beds, a table to sit, and a couple of cabinets scattered around. This is a unique room though because we don't see this in any other home. The children's bedroom on the other hand is a great addition because there is just plenty of room to roam around in. The room on the right side of the hall is the master bedroom, which to say the least is some of the best we have seen so far. The fire on the right hand side and the dining table in the middle and even the display cases really bring this room together to make it one of, if not the best master bedroom in Skyrim. Moving on from that though, we have the enchanters area which is unique because usually they couple both the enchanting and alchemy tables into one room, so it is definitely a plus in my opinion this time around. I cannot say enough how much space we actually got here because if we take a look at our next room, it's more of an atrium style area which other homes would never even consider. I love the Centurion waterfall decoration at the center of it and it fits the Dwemer theme really well. Now if we head up and to the left we have the farming area which if I'm being quite honest we could have done without. Even though I love the idea of having a large and spacious home when it gets to the point where you are throwing rooms in there just because it might mean that there are too many. They could have combined two different rooms into one especially the farm room because having your own decoration to a core area would have been amazing to see. Continuing on through another set of doors that leads into the best room in this Dwemer ruin. This is considered to be the throne room and it looks absolutely majestic. I wish we could have gotten a room like this in other homes, but the design here fits really well with Nichu Anthems, and even the feature to have steam rain down on the player while in the throne was a neat little touch. The final main room is the kitchen, and even though I think they could have done this better, I'm glad that we got to see it nonetheless. There is a second floor to Nichu Anthems, but there really isn't much to say about it. The manufactory area mostly dealt with the quest line to get the home, but other than that, there is no real feature that stands out. Overall, I'd say Nichu Anthems has some of the best designs for a home in Skyrim, and coupled with the fact that it is so large, makes this a top 2 creation club house. 
And finally, at our number one spot, we have, in my opinion, the best home in Skyrim with Golden Hills Plantation. It wasn't an easy decision on which one would take the number one spot, but when you take a look at all Golden Hills has to offer, it becomes pretty clear that this was the best one. Just a little southeast of Rorikstead, in the plains of Whiterun, you will find an abandoned farm with some dark secrets to uncover. There you will find the quest to acquire the home known as the Unquiet Dead, which does take a little time to do and is a really sad tale of what transpired here. To actually get the home, you will not have to purchase anything, but instead, any future upgrades will require a certain amount of gold, which we will get back to that in just a second. There are actually two quests involved with Golden Hills, with the first being Unquiet Dead, but the second taking you through somewhat of a tutorial on all of the different features of the home. You will follow it along planting crops, hiring a steward, and even recruiting farmhands. A steward is pretty similar to the ones from the Hearthfire DLC which they will handle maintaining the plantation, upgrading the home, and purchasing any animals. Then we have the farmhands which are a little more unique because the more you have, the more your production will increase. Essentially, Golden Hills doubles as both a player home and a business where you will be able to make money off of it, and it is great to see that you can hire your own farmhands to increase profits. What makes it such a unique home is that it takes what we did in the Hearthfire DLC and adds on to that idea by being able to run your own farm. There are also a number of different upgrades for both the interior and exterior of the home, Starting with the outside, we have a lot of unique ones with the animal pen, stables, bunkhouses, apiaries, and a windmill. The animal pens let you house a few animals from horses in the stables, cows, chickens, and even goats. This is a good variety and I would expect nothing less from a creation that is all about farming. The farmhand bunkhouse, even though a little small, is a nice addition to an already great player home. There isn't really much to the bunkhouse itself, but we do see a couple of decorations spread throughout, which is really good to see. It is meant to increase production from the farmhands, which is definitely a great feature for this creation. Our last two are the apiaries and windmill, which speaks for itself with being able to get bees and flour from the respective builds. We also get all of the crafting stations, and even though it has been a common theme through most of the homes, it is nonetheless good to see. There is also the option of adding exterior decorations, which will give your home a couple of planters and furnishing options to make it just that much better. Overall, I'd say the exterior design for Golden Hills is easily the best we have seen because of how much you are able to do. There are also plenty of upgrades as well that make it a lot better than others, so that is definitely a plus in my opinion. The interior design, even though may not be as grand as one like the Dwemer Rune of Nichu Anthems, does have a lot going for it that makes it so good. Just like with the exterior, you are able to upgrade it over time through purchasing them. From the furnishings for the house, you will be able to choose from a kitchen, dining area, alchemy and enchanting lab, loft, master bedroom, child's bedroom, library, and display room. First one up is the kitchen and dining room. You will come to find that all of these rooms are quite small and don't really cover much space, but they do however look really well designed. The display area is a good example of this with it being quite small but utilizing its space well. If we head up to the top floor, we have the master bedroom which is a good example of what a farmhouse should look like. A couple of seating areas, a place for your ledger, and a nice bed after a long day's work. There is also a balcony which even though doesn't have much, is a good view of your farm and the plains of Whiterun as a whole. Finally we have the downstairs which has both the enchanting and alchemy room. There is a second room down below which in my opinion was a wasted opportunity because it's more of a storage area but could have been used as a second main room. 
The Alchemy and Enchanting Lab, on the other hand, has some of my favorite features about these areas with storage options, places for displaying gear, and the overall aesthetic of the place. I wouldn't say that the interior design of Golden Hills is what gives it its number one rating. Instead, I really enjoy all the features it has to offer, and of course, the exterior is next to none. Golden Hills might seem like your normal run-of-the-mill home at first, but when you take a look at all that it has to offer, there is no question that it deserves the number one spot. Houses in Skyrim are a great place to relax and show off your very own designs. The ones from Creation Club take what we got in the main game and make it a little different with their own styles and features. All of the ones we have talked about today are very unique in their own way with mage towers, Nordic lawn houses, and even vampire manors. It is good to see so much diversity in the homes for Skyrim, and with it being such a harsh environment, they are a great way to bring a little comfort to these lands. But that is all for me now though guys, if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and subscribe, comment any videos you want to see in the future, and I'll see you all next time!